Oh, another quick video showing the Talmudic Judeo-Satanist lobby, the Talmudic Jewish lobby, keeping to their 2,000-year tradition of trying to stifle and censor speech they don't like, just like any good Nazi or communist would. This is on a, this is on a Canadian dimension. It says, yes, the IHI... IHRA definition of anti-Semitism is intended to censor political expression. Eleven examples showing how the IHRA definition poses a threat to free speech and aims to silence Palestinian solidarity. Yep. Because that's the thing, is that it's only speech if the Talmudic Judeo-Satanist, the Talmudic Jewish lobby, agrees with it. Continuing on the article, it says much has already been written about the dangers posed by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance working definition of anti-Semitism and its illustrative examples. But the uh, definition, which has been adopted by the Canadian government, the province of Ontario, and several cities, conflates anti-Semitism with many forms of criticism that, and protest of Israel, thereby posing a threat to free speech and amounting to anti-Palestinian discrimination. However, supporters of the oh, by the way, I've already clarified my stance on Israel, so. You know, they're not going to do it again. Anyone who, th who says I'm racist is basically just lying. But it says, however, supporters of the IHRA are quick to reject a claim that asylums of speech, usually pointing to a sentence on the IHRA website, which promises that criticism of Israel similar to that leveled against any other country cannot be regarded as anti-Semitic. The Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs, Canada's most prominent pro-Israel organization, even suggested that to make such an accusation amounts to an anti-Jewish conspiracy theory or classic anti-Semitism. On the other hand, liberal Zionist group JSpace Canada recognizes the danger that the IHRA definition could be misused to attack speech about Israel, but nonetheless dismisses most objections to the definition and has given uh, it strong though cautious support. This is close, this is to ignore reality, as journalist Ben White recently explained. Uh, key supporters of IHRA in the United States and the United Kingdom specifically intend that this will be used to crush Palestinian advocacy. He notes that th those promoting the IHRA definition stress that the definition allows for legitimate criticism of Israel, yet the, the yet evidence demonstrates that what constitutes legitimate and illegitimate is determined by individuals who believe the BDS movement and discussion of Israeli apartheid is, be is to be beyond the pale. Canadians for Justice and Peace in the Middle East came to a similar conclusion in its submission to, Ontario, to Ontario Bill 168, which, was, which would have adopted the IHRA definition as Ontario's legislation. The bill was later replaced. In the article, I will expand on this analysis to show how uh, censorious, censorious sorry, motivations are driving the push to adopt the definition. Yeah, that's the truth of the matter, is that just like any good communist or Nazi, the Talmudic Judeo-Satanist lobby wants to censor free speech while giving lip service to free speech. But then it's only free speech if they agree with it. Continuing on. Uh, the IHRA in their own words. It is important that we closely examine what Canada's supporters of IHRA definition are actually saying. In their public statements, IHRA supporters have pub uh, already applied the definition in ways they deem many activities to be anti-Semitic, student events on Israeli apartheid, the grassroots movement to boycott Israel, Canada's vote on Palestinian self-determination at the United Nations, humanitarian finding, or funding to Palestinian NGOs, and even writings of eminent public intellectual Noam Chomsky, Noam Chomsky. Even more troubling, IHRA supporters understand the definition as a tool to empower public authorities to take action to stop, disallow, or to defund many forms of pro-Palestinian political expression. Below is an example of just, of just 11 recent, sorry, below is a sample, sorry, of just 11 recent examples in which Canada's proponents of the IHRA definition have openly declared its purpose to censor stigmatized political expression about Israel and disallow Palestinian activism. So they give example number one, anti-Zionism and harsh criticism of Israel. Most supporters of IHRA definition see it as applying to anti-Zionism and harsh criticism of Israel in a, in a press release applauding Canada's support for it in 2009, or 2019. The Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs said the IHR definition, sorry, the IHRA definition also explic explicitly recognizes that anti-Zionism that is a delegitimization de 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 tongue twister for me there, and demonization of the Jewish state is a clear and unequivocal expression of anti-Semitism. In, in a related web post titled "Why is the IHRA definition important?" It says the uh, CIGA claimed that the IHRA definition uh, clearly exposes how the demonization of Israel is anti-Semitism, pure and simple. Well, I guess it had the sense of the New Testament because, you know. 
racial Israel, because I criticize the false religion of Judaism, when I talk about Jews despairingly referring to religious Jews, followers of the, of the religion of Judaism, but racial Israel itself is in a lot of sin. So you have the, I guess, consider the New Testament anti-Semitic as well. But continuing on the article, it is worth noting that in historical terms, Zionism is a recent political ideology and its opponents includes most Palestinians and a minority of Jews. In fact, various demands for justice, including the right to return for Palestinian refugees or a single binational democratic state in Palestine, Israel, are usually characterized as anti-Zionist. Evidently, there are major implications for free speech and academic freedom if we define such views as anti-Semitic. Further accusations uh, about delegitimization de de hard time pronouncing that for some reason, demonization and double standards against Israel are entirely su uh, subjective claims about criticism, and in practice these terms are used to describe virtually any statement about Israel that its supporters do not like. To give another example, student union for, stu sorry, student union support for Palestinian campus activities. In February 2020, Benai Brinth, I think that's how you say it, uh, Brith, however you say it, uh, Canada and Friends of the Simon Weisenthal Center uh, each endorsed and, and circulated an open letter to the president of the University of Toronto, which argued that adopting the IHRA definition would give the administration the obligation to intervene in the internal affairs of the student associations if they allowed if they allowed protests of Israel to take place, such as advocacy for a boycott, sanctions, and divestment campaign (BDS) against Israel or Israeli apartheid week events. Uh, they uh, wrote, we put to you and the University of Toronto administration that the adoption of the IH, I, IHRA definition of anti-Semitism is full and as policy would be necessary to uh, necessary first uh, concrete step forward. Uh, flowing from this, the university would have every right, if not an obligation, to face down the UTGSU's UTGS, support for BDS as well as holding its annual, uh, as well as its holding of Sorry, as well as its holding of the annual Israel Apartheid Week. Now I'll get to reading stuff on a computer, but notice that how they're they're claiming, oh, it, you can criticize Israel, you can criticize stuff about, you know, and, this, and believe me, this will be used as a sense of criticism of their false religion, their Judaism, and their blasphemous Talmud as well. But notice how they're giving lip service to free speech, but then using this, this definition to censor free speech. Just keeping with their Judeo-Satanist 2,000 year tradition of silencing and, and uh, trying to stamp out speech they don't like while giving lip service well we support your right to speak freely only if we agree with what's being said that's a little terms and conditions at the bottom there hey it's just the judeo-satanist lobby doing what they do best you can read all, all through the book of acts you can read you know in uh, john chapter 5 john chapter 10 you know in john chapter 8 where they tried to shut down uh, jesus christ when he rebuked them it's a long history that goes back 2000 years just nothing new with the Judeo-Satanist lobby. Wanted to point that out. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.